Hello everyone this is part 15 of what if Naruto was in Sword Art Online, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. Allo, 427, Sleeping Nights HQ. After asking for Naruto's and Azuna's help, Yuki dragged them to the HQ of her guild. Now Azuna and Naruto are standing before the members of the guild while Yuki began to the introduction. Azuna-san, Naruto-san. This is my guild. Sleeping Nights, said Yuki proudly with a wide smile. Some members seeing that Naruto is in front of them widen their eyes in disbelief. They couldn't believe that the living legend is standing right in front of them. Upon noticing the intense gazes on him, Naruto started to scratch the back of his head in nervousness. The brown-haired boy with brown eyes wearing a red armor decided to stand up and introduce himself. I am Jun. Nice to meet you Azuna-san, Naruto-sama. It's an honor to have you two in our guild. Naruto sighed and then looked up said. Don't add the Sama suffix to my name. It's felt really, uncomfortable for me. Just Naruto is okay. You um, I am Talcon. And nice to meet Al, said a nervous green-haired boy wearing glasses, but he was interrupted by the girl that was sitting next to him that shoved her elbow to his ribs. Stop being so nervous all the time, Tal. When you talk to a girl sometimes it happen, said the Spriggan girl next to Talcon with her head in her palm. Then she turned to Azuna and said, I am Nori. Nice to meet you, Azuna-san. After that she turned to Naruto with a flirtatious look and said slowly, and of course, I am glad you are here as well, handsome. Naruto hearing that chuckles nervously while rubbing his head. He could imagine the furious looks of his three girlfriends if they found out about this. Just the thought, gives him the shivers down his spine. Nice to meet you too. I am Siyun, said an Undine girl with a soft smile. I am Teki. Nice to meet you too, said a big guy of the group. And I am Yuki. The leader of the guild, Sleeping Nights, introduced Yuki with a big smile. Then Yuki began to approach Azuna and catch her hand then looked at her with puppy eyes and said. Azuna-san, actually we want to defeat the boss on this floor. With just one party, which are eight people. Normally in Allo the max members in one party are seven. But Naruto helped to expand it to eight in the new update. Azuna hearing that shouted out in surprise at their request, while Naruto widened his eyes and grinned widely at the request. You guys knows that the boss fight normally need about five to seven parties right. I don't think to fight the boss with just one party is possible, complained Azuna. Not really, said Naruto with his eyes closed. At that everyone began to look at him questionably. Naruto then opened his eyes and replied. Have you forgotten who fight the boss solo thrice, eh nei chan? Azuna was opened her mouth to retort, but the closed it. Then she looked up at Naruto and said. Not everybody is as invincible as you, Naruto. But it's really possibly with one party to fight boss. After all we challenged the 25 and 26 floor boss with one party as well, said Yuki smiling while scratching the back of her head. At that Azuna and even Naruto widen his eyes in surprise. W what? With only the six of you? Asked Azuna incredulously. Yuki just nodded her head in affirmative. Naruto whistled loudly in respect at their skills. But whenever could finish the boss of us the big guilds always interfered, said Yuki sadly. Why are you guys want to defeat the boss so much? Asked Naruto curiously. We first met in a certain games net community, and we all became fast friends. But unfortunately we will only able to adventure together until spring, said Siyun. But Yuki for some reason looked down at her cup and hold it tighter. Everybody will be busy with their lives. So before that happens, we all decided to make a memory that we'd never be able to forget. And that's a boss fight. Asked Azuna. Hi. If you defeat a boss then your name will appear on the Swordsman's Memorial on the Black Iron Palace, in the town of Beginnings Right. What we want is to have our names engraved on the Swordsman Memorial as well, said Siyun, as she was about to continue, but Naruto decided to interrupt her. Oh. I understand now. Because the memorial will only write the names of the leaders of the party, if there were many of them. That's why in order to have all the eight names on that memorial, you need to defeat the boss with only one party. Am I right? Hi, it's everything like Naruto-san said. Because of that we need two more strong members in the party to help us. 
That's why Yuki made an arena and challenging people in order to find strong fighters, said Siyun. And you guys know what? Naruto is string beyond imagination. He defeated both me and Azuna even when he was outnumbered, said Yuki recalled the memory with excitement in her eyes. Everybody looked at Naruto with wide eyes for a while. Then Jun chuckled and said. Well, as expect from the legendary Batasai. I know from the very beginning that even Yuki won't be a match to him. Naruto decided to raise his arrogance a little and puffed his chest in pride. That action was actually everybody to giggle. Siyun then looked at the two of them and asked. Will you two help us? I know we don't have anything to repay you with. With that said she sent an invite to both of them. Well, I won't be actually fighting, but only will act when you guys in trouble. I wouldn't want to take the thrill of the victory over the boss from you all, said Naruto and pressed, except. And don't worry about the repayment. Just save it, you need lots of money to prepare for boss fight after all, said Azuna. Everybody began to smile as Azuna and Naruto accept the invitation. Then you two will help us. Asked Siyun hopefully clasping her hands. Naruto looked at everyone in front of him and saw that this boss fight meant very much for them. But he also recalled the near-death experience when fighting bosses in Sao. He recalled the time he went to the 60th floor alone to confront the boss in order to complete his Hiten Mitsurugi Ryu training. But he also remembers that now everything is different. Nobody will die from the boss fight anymore, nobody will need to fight like his life is on the line, there will be no tragedy in boss fights anymore. He looked up and then replied with a smile. Yeah, I will help you with a goal. Asuna also thinking the same line as Naruto. Even right now she thinks how. To fight safely, to fight so that they will achieve a certain victory. She then glanced at Naruto and was sure he also thought like her. She nearly forgets one fact that the game was created to have fun and Yuki knows better than her about that. Okay, let's give it a try, said Azuna with a smile. Yuki immediately widened her eyes in happiness hearing her response and clasped her hands and said. Arigato, Azuna, then she turned to Naruto, and you too Naruto. It's nothing really. I always help my friends when they are in need, said Naruto smiling foxily. Azuna suddenly remembered something and decided to ask Yuki. Any, Yuki, you duel so that you could find strong fighters to help your guild right? Yes, that's right, answered Yuki. But if that is true then there were plenty of strong people out there. For example, the Spriggan in black clothes that was carrying two swords, said Azuna. Yeah, I remember him very well. But he won't do, replied Yuki. Why? asked Naruto curiously. Because he had figured out my secret, answered Yuki solemnly. Naruto narrowed his eyes at hearing that fact. Azuna just blinked owlishly not really get what she said. Time skip. Okay, then we will meet here at one o'clock okay? Offered Azuna. Okay, Roger. Um, actually I may be late a little by that time. I still need to make sure my girlfriend has recover. So if by that time I still not arrive just head to the boss room. I will catch up, said Naruto. Okay, Naruto, said Yuki. With that they all disband. Azuna decided to write a message to Kirito and the girls that she will explain everything later. Suddenly she felt the connection was out. Someone has yanked the cord. Azuna opened her eyes in surprise in real work and saw her mother was standing in front of her with impassive face. Why did you do that Kasan? asked Azuna clearly not pleased with her mother's action. I told you already. If you ever late for dinner using that machine again, I will cut the power, said Kiyoko. I am sorry. I lost track of time. But it's not necessary for you to yank the cord. You could just shook me or shout in my ear and I will feel it, complained Azuna. Last time I did that it took five minutes for you to wake up. I actually don't understand why do you think that the real world is less important than that game of yours, said Kiyoko with a sigh. Azuna looked down and apologized silently. I am sorry. I will be careful next time. Don't let it repeat again. Next time if this still happen I will take your machine away, said Kiyoko. Azuna widened her eyes in horror then looked down helplessly. Then her mother said that she should have a dinner, but Azuna refused. Her mother just said do what you want and left her room. Azuna went to her wardrobe and wore the clothes and went out to refresh her mind. Naruto's apartment. Naruto is sitting next to Shino and feeding her. When Shino has done he took her hand asked. How do you feel Shino-chan? Shino smiled gratefully at him and tightened the grip of his hand and said. I am feeling better now. 
Thank you for feeding me, Naruto. You are welcome, said Naruto smiling. So did something happen while I am absent? Asked Shino curiously. Well, I challenged both Zekin and Nechan to the duel and won. Then I was dragged by Zekin to her guild and joined it, said Naruto. Anything else? Tomorrow, I and Nechan will help them to defeat the boss on 27th floor. They just really want to get their name of the memorial in the Black Iron Palace, said Naruto. Well, it's late already. I will go to sleep now. And Naruto, said Shino. What? I love you, said Shino with a soft and sincere smile. Naruto smiled back at her then kissed her on the lips softly, separate and whispered. And I love you too. Shino smiled widely at that and fall to sleep. Naruto went out and closed the door softly. Next day, Asuna has arrived at the sleeping knight's HQ and everyone was already there except Naruto. They planned the attacking positions and head to the boss room. Floor 27. Dungeon. Sleeping Knight's members are going to the boss room with ease. They didn't have any problem with defeating the minions at all. Wow, everyone is so strong. I don't think we will even need Naruto for the boss fight, said Azuna. Yuki just smiled proudly then decided to ask one thing that was on her mind since yesterday. Any, Azuna, why did Naruto call you Nei-chan? Is he your brother? But he didn't resemble you at all. That is because Naruto is not actually my blood-related brother. But even so I think of him like one, explained Azuna. Suddenly she stopped Yuki when she found something is not right ahead. She cast at a speed that call a fish familiar and sent him ahead. Immediately there revealed three players hidden under a camouflage. Azuna narrowed her eyes at them. They immediately said that they are not here not fight. Azuna then said for them to drop their weapons to prove their point. They did just that. Azuna decided to ask. If you are not peaks then why need to hide? The sylph of the group responded. We are waiting for someone. We didn't wanting to fight mobs so we decided to hide. Fine. We are here to fight the boss. So you guys could go now, said Azuna. The foreign party pretend to leave but the sylph quickly cast a lizard and sent it to follow sleeping knights. They opened the door to boss room and went in not noticed that there was a mini lizard went in as well. When the door closed itself the torch began to lit up and the boss appeared. It was a huge ogre with two head. It also has four hands with hammers in the upper hands and the lower hands hold a chain. It began to roar loudly. All right, let's go, said Azuna. Yeah, said everyone with that they charged at the boss. Time skip. The party has failed to defeat the boss and was forced to return back. Oh, man we lost completely. What the heck is that attack? It's not fair nor at all, complained Nori while shaking the poor Talcon. Not only that, but his defense is powerful too. Is it work in pattern? Wondered Teki. And we tried so hard too, muttered Yuki. Suddenly she was yanked to Azuna. I wondered if Naruto was with us. Would we have won? Wondered Nori tapping her chin. Everyone get here quickly, said Azuna with a serious face. Everybody looked at her in surprise but still approach her. You remember the three guys before we went to the boss room right? Those guys are scouts for guilds that fight bosses and also spies on other parties to report back to the guild about the information they gathered. When we were fighting the boss I noticed a mini lizard on the floor. They had been using us, explained Azuna. So that's why after our fight with the 25 and 26th floor bosses were so easy to defeat, Yuki realized in grief. Yes. They had been using you guys to reveal the boss's weakness and attack patterns, said Azuna. And this time, we was used as well. Wondered Siyun in Grimace. No, not necessary. The time is still too short for a large guild to build a necessary party to confront the boss. We will return the boss room before they could gather the party, said Azuna. At that Yuki began to smile widely. Floor 27. Dungeon. Sleeping Knights has decided to return the boss room but when they were in front of the boss room there were plenty of players there already. Asuna walked to the big guy that was nearest to then and asked. Excuse me, but could you guys move aside? We'd like to challenge the boss here. Sorry, but this place is off limits right now, answered the guy. And why is that? asked Asuna with narrowed eyes. She deduced that those three guys has already report to the guild and right now are waiting for their boss hunt party. Our guild is about to fight the boss. We are getting ready. So you guys just wait here for a while, said the guy. Just as I thought, thought Azuna angrily. For a while. How long? Well, an hour or so. I don't really sure. 
it depends how strong the boss is, replied the guy while tapping his chin in thought. An hour. We don't have time to wait. If you guys are going in right now is the other matter, but you guys just waiting right now. So let us through if not challenging the boss, retort Azuna. Sorry, but we can't. The order from the top. If you have a problem with that just go to the guild HQ and discuss that with the leaders. Our guild is in IG City, said the guy. It will take an hour to get there. We don't have time to waste, complained Azuna. Yuki put her hand on her shoulder then stepped forward and said. Hey, you. In other words no matter what we say you won't move right. Well, basically, yeah, said the guy a little nervous now. Okay, fine, then, said Yuki and began to unsheathe her blade preparing for PK. You guys leave me no choice. Let's fight then. Everybody widens their eyes in surprise at her decision. W wait Yuki. That's, retort Azuna, but Yuki interrupt her. Azuna, sometimes the problem could only be solved through fighting, said Yuki then turn her head back a little looking at her guild members. I am sure that they also felt the same. Sleeping knights began to smirk and preparing for PK. These guys are willing to protect this place down to the last men. Is that right? Asked Yuki with a smile. We are. The guy tried to negotiate. Go ahead. Draw your sword, said Yuki with a serious look. The guy was hesitate to fight her and was about to make a move. Yukon leaps forward and slash him to the chest. The guy was about to raise his axe to attack but Yuki was faster. She deflected the strike and used quadruple pain to send the guy to the ground. T that wasn't fair. It was a surprise attack, complained the down guy. With that everyone preparing for the fight. One of the guy heard of footsteps that was about to approach here and smirked. Oh. No. The reinforcements has arrived, Nori said worriedly. Sorry, Azuna, for getting you in this mess. But I don't regret it, said Yuki. Azuna looked back and suddenly saw a black portal appears. She smirked and said. Don't worry. Our trump card also has arrived. The reinforcement decided to stop as they were curious what is that appears in front of them all of a sudden. From the black portal, Naruto stepped out with an arrogant smirk. The sleeping knight's members began to cheer loudly. Naruto turned back to his comrades and apologized. Sorry, I am late, then he turned back to the reinforcements and said. Sorry, but as of this moment this place is off limits. If you want to get in, defeat me first. Kirito that was still in the middle of the crowd sighed and then smirked. That Naruto, always liked to show off. He will never change. The reinforcements began to feel nervous as in front of them was the legend of the VRMMO, Naruto the Batasai himself. Allo. Floor 27. Dungeon. In front of the boss room. The sleeping knights each has a wide grin on their face, as they looked at Naruto's back. Naruto himself has an arrogant grin and challenging eyes, as he looked at the reinforcement that has come to fight the boss. They looked nervous at each other and whispered. Oi. Isn't that Batasai? What is he doing here? I don't know, but it seems he is with those guys. So if we want to get to the boss, we need to defeat him. But that's impossible. I heard he could single-handedly defeat a whole guild. How the heck are we gonna fight against someone like that? The leader heard the whispers and shouted out angrily. Why are you all so afraid of him? He is just one person. No matter how powerful he is, he can't fight us all. It is obviously that all those rumors were only rumors that exaggerate his abilities. No need to fear him. The crowd began to murmur again. While Naruto just cocked his head, but the arrogant grin never left his face. Ho, oh, so you really think that all those rumors about me were only mere rumors? He then made a motion, come here, with his palm and said. If you want to find out whether it's true or not, just come at me and you will find out. Kirito, that was still mix in the crowd face palm and muttered. Again with that cocky attitude. Sai asterisk guess I am gonna help him a little. Not that he need any to begin with. With that Kirito somersaulted to Naruto's direction. Naruto saw who it was and grinned even wider. Sorry, but now this place is truly off limits. So if you guys don't want to have your ass kick. I advise for all of you to wait before those guys finish the boss or return to your guild, said Kirito turned to face the crowd. The crowd was surprised at the sudden appearance of Kirito and began to sweat even more nervously. After all right in front of the right now are the best VRMMO players. Azuna saw Kirito appeared in front of her and smiled widely. 
The rest of the guild just looked at him with a question mark on their head, wondered why he is here. Any, Azuna. Azuna turned to Yuki. That guy is there to help us, right? Azuna nodded then smiled. With these two here, we can relax. Don't do anything. They will take care of the rest. Also, look intently. It's not like you will see such a grand fight every day. The rest of sleeping knights nodded and watched closely at Naruto and Kirito. The leader of the guild narrowed his eyes and said. All right, if you two don't get out of our way, we will just wipe you guys to the floor. Mages, ready to attack. The mages stepped forward and began to chant the incantation. Naruto looked back Kirito with a grin and said. It's been a while since we fight together, N.E., Kirito. Let's play a race. Who will kill the most? Kirito sighed and said. Again with the gamble. But, I don't have any intent to lose to you. So I accept the challenge. Kirito looked back at Naruto with a grin. Naruto grinned back and stood in a stance and prepare for the attack. Kirito also stood to his stance. The mages unleashed their magical attacks at them. Naruto closed his eyes with a grin and stood to Batojutsu stance. Kirito also smirked with his two swords in his hands. The moment the attacks reached them, Naruto split the magical arrows that were headed to him in half, with his eyes still close. The grin never left his face. Kirito used dual wielding to cut the attacks to pieces. The sleeping knights are looking at those two in disbelief. Siyun even fall to her knees in disbelief. All they could do was gawk at Naruto and Kirito's display. The leaders of the guild widened his eyes and muttered. How? How did they cut the magical attacks? That's impossible. The rest of the guild began to gulp in fear at the display. Naruto opened his eyes then looked at the leader board. Is that all you can offer? Come at me all at once. Or else you guys won't stand a chance. Show me your determination to fight. The leader then ordered for his guild to form a formation. The mages began to chant the incantation again. Naruto raised his two fingers and said. Two. All of you will lose in two minutes. Let's go, Kirito. It's time to race. Kirito nodded with a grin and began to rush with crazy speed at the crowd. Naruto was already rushed in and fight like a beast, no more correctly it was a massacre. And the smile never left his face. It's really creepy to see one person butcher hundreds of people with a smile on his face. Kirito also not want to be behind and was slashing the enemy right and left. All the while, the sleeping knights were silent the whole time. They could only watch the massacre that was caused by the two persons silently. It was such unbelievable sight. Nobody could say anything. Asuna looked at the two that were still fighting and muttered. Kirito-kun. Naruto. I love you two so much. After two minutes, the massacre was over. Naruto looked back at Kirito and saw him panting a little. So what is your score? Kirito looked at Naruto, took a breath and answered. About, 45 people. And you. Naruto smirked widely and made a victory sign and exclaimed. Ya, yeah, Jang. As usual my score is the best. 64. Kirito just rolled his eyes then said. All right, you win this time. But you need to hurry to your boss room is already opened. Okay, thank for the help. Also, I'd want to ask you one question. But later, I will go to fight the boss now, said Naruto and run to the rest of SK, sleeping nights, waving back to Kirito. When Naruto reached then he was swarm with questions and praises. Naruto calmed then down and replied. All the questions later. It's time we kick the boss ass. But first we need to take care of the rest of them, N.E. Osu. The SK shouted at once and charged at the rest of the guild that was standing in front of them. Naruto and Yuki charged at once and slashed at the guy in front of them. Then he jumped back and used Doryuzen to send the rest to fly behind. The SK charged at them and take care of them one after another. But there were still healers, Asuna take out her sword and tank them, sending them to fly to different direction. The rest was taken care of Naruto, when he unleashed Ryukansen, Arashi and destroy the rest of them. Yuki also dance around and take out some of the enemies while smiling happily. And so all the enemies were wiped out. Naruto then turned to the SK and said. Now is serious. Although I could defeat the boss by myself, but I want to give you guys the privilege. Show him, you spirit. The SK cheered loudly and opened the door of the boss room. Before the door of the room completely close, Kirito waved to Azuna and muttered, good luck. Azuna smiled at him and nodded then the door closed. Boss room. The candle in the room began to lit up which means that the boss will appear soon enough. 
Everybody please max your HP and MP. We will handle the boss as we planned. If the plan fail then Naruto will step up. So don't worry, fight at your best, ordered Azuna, as everybody began to drink the potions. You guys just try your best to fight the boss. I won't let anyone die, so don't worry about it, said Naruto with a smile and raised a thump up. Everyone looked at each other and nodded. Azuna then walked to Yuki and said, After this battle is over, please tell me about yourself. What worlds have you seen? What kind of adventures you have? Naruto stood in the back, just looked at Yuki silently. He felt that Yuki has a secret that she don't want anyone to know. But Naruto wanted to know. He wanted to help the girl. Even if she just recently became his friend, he wanted to help her. Though, he couldn't force her to say anything, but Kirito knows something, so he will ask him after the boss fight. Suddenly, the floor blaze on and the boss began to appear. The party wasted no time and rushed at the boss. Asuna and Siyun stayed behind as healer. Naruto stood behind them and watched them closely. The boss roared loudly and slammed his twin hammers to the ground causing the shockwave. Yuki and Jun jumped up to avoid the attack and slashed at the boss's leg, caused it to roar in pain. Asuna decided to cast a fireball using her wand. It hit directly at boss's face. Naruto also chanted his incantation and cast the rain of shadow needles at the boss to stun it. The party nodded at each other and charged at it with a roar and assaulted the boss. The boss changed to the defense stance to protect itself from the attacks. It then shook itself and sent the party to fly back. Its eyes began to glow red and it started to swing its chain widely. Naruto narrowed his eyes and cast a shadow dome around the party to protect them from harm. He then shouted out. Everyone, give it everything you got. I have your back here. Go all out. They looked at Naruto and nodded. Yuki began to charge at the boss and slashed at its right shoulder. Jun used his skill to slash at its hips. Chuki threw his axe at its chest and it suddenly took the defensive stance. Asuna noticed that and realized something. She realized that every time the boss was strikes to the chest and began to change to defensive stance. So she deduced that crystal on its chest is its weakness. She told Swing to take the healing by herself for a minute to check it herself. Asuna casted an ice crystal and send it at the crystal on the boss's chest. As expected the boss roared in pain and took the defensive stance. Asuna smiled at the discovery and told everyone to aim at the crystal on the boss's chest. Naruto saw that Asuna finally has managed to fund the weakness of the boss and smirked. As expected from my Nei chan But, the boss HP has reached the red zone and the party began to smile happily. But something unexpected happened. The crystal that was on the boss chest suddenly sink to its skin. The boss then began to glow red. Its eyes blazing with blood lust. The party's eyes widen in horror. Quote dot dot dot. That's still not enough to defeat it. I always know that if that crystal was left, then to defeat him will be too easy. Now what will you do, eh, Nei-chan? Muttered Naruto in amusement. The party is already panting heavily. They couldn't believe that the boss still have this trump card. Yuki looked at the boss while panting and gripped her fist. They was forced to retreat as they boss entered berserk mode. How the heck can we defeat it now? We couldn't even approach it now because of its crazy chain. Complied Nori while pointing at the berserk boss. Naruto saw that the team could handle the boss anymore decided to step in himself. He run to Yuki and said. Yuki, I will teleport us then stun it. The rest is up to you okay. Yuki nodded in agreement and said. Okay, Naruto. Let's finish this ugly boss. Naruto smirked and then teleport both right in front of the boss face. Naruto used Ryumizen to stun it, then he shouted. Now or never Yuki. Yeah. Shouted Yuki with eyes blazing in excitement. She then used her OSK and unleashed all the 11 hits at the boss's face. And just that the boss was defeated and shattered like glass. Naruto turned to Yuki and pointed his fist at her. Good job, Yuki. He then turned to the rest and said. Good job, everyone. So how do you feel, when fighting the boss? And when you defeated it? So thrilling right? We did it, said Asuna and slumped to her knees. Yuki couldn't help herself, so she jumped at Asuna in excitement and hugged her tightly. We did it. We really did it. Asuna, can you believe it? Yeah, but you need to thank Naruto as well. After all, he was the one to give you that chance to finish off the boss, said Asuna underneath her. Yuki then turned to Naruto and shouted out while smiling brightly. Arigato, Naruto. If not for you we won't be able to make it. 
Naruto just smiled while shook his head respond. It was nothing. We guys did the most part after all. I just help a little in the last part. The rest of the party also slumped to the ground tiredly. The door slowly opened and the same leader of the guild walked in, but the boss was nowhere. Naruto stuck his tongue at him childishly, while Yuki smirked and showed the victory sign, as the rest of the party. The leader gritted his teeth in anger and cursed stomping his feet to the ground. They returned to the city. Asuna said, Woo, it's finally over. No not yet, said Sween which caused Asuna to blink questionably. We still need to celebrate our victory. Oh, yeah, we need to celebrate. Let's make a huge party. I propose a ramen party, said Naruto with stars in his eyes when he think about the ramen party. Asuna sweat dropped and said, I know you really like ramen, Naruto. But the ramen party is oblivious and absurd idea. The rest of the SK nodded their head in agreement, which caused Naruto to cry comically. Everybody began to laugh at Naruto's expression. Asuna then proposed that maybe they could celebrate at her party. Yuki's eyes suddenly became really sad, which Naruto noticed. Sween was about to say something, but Yuki hold her hand. Sween looked at her. Yuki just shook her head. We will take that offer Asuna-san, replied Sween. And then they went to Asuna's house. Asuna entered her house and was surprised that on the table there are already food and fruits. On the table, also a note that was written by Yui, the congratulation on the victory. That they began sharing stories from the different worlds. Yuki then said that they will disband until spring. Asuna said that she really wanted to be friends with them, she wanted to meet all of them in the real world. I am sorry, Asuna. But that is not possible, said Yuki her hair covered her eyes. Why? asked Asuna curiously. Yuki felt really terrible, but she couldn't answer her question. So Siyun decided to help her. I, we, um. Asuna immediately understood and said. Oh, I am sorry for asking something so weird. We should go to the, the memorial. I am sure they have already updated it. Oh, yeah, we totally forget about that. Exclaimed Jun. With that everybody began to stand up and go to the Black Iron Castle. Naruto approached Yuki and said. Yuki, could we speak in private? Yuki blinked at him but nod. Everybody began to look as they walked out with a question mark on their head. Naruto and Yuki flew to the forest and Yuki asked. What do you want to talk about, Naruto? Don't be angry at me. I just really want to help you so please answer me truthfully. Why is that you couldn't meet Asuna IRL? Naruto asked softly. Yuki looked uncomfortably to the ground for a while. But when she looked up, she couldn't turn away from Naruto's eyes. They are so passionate and full of concern for her. I, I, I am dying Naruto, Yuki whispered tearfully. While Naruto's eyes and mouth opened in shock. He could only muttered, what? In complete shock. Yuki then embraced him tightly sobbing. I, I don't want to die, Naruto. I want to live. I want to have friends, to go to school, to have fun with my friends. Naruto snapped out of his shock and embrace her back, comfort her. You won't die Yuki. I will never let my friend die. Be but you can't do anything. You're not a god. You can't help me anymore, sobbed Yuki. I was said to have the ability to do the impossible things. I will try to save you. Just believe in me. I can save you. I don't know how I know, but I feel that I could save you, said Naruto rubbing her back. Yuki sniffed and said, T then I will believe in you. I have seen you done a bunch of impossible things. I will believe in you and wait. Naruto then nodded back to her and said, Let's go back to the others. And don't tell anything to Asuna just yet. Just pretend that this conversation never happened. Yuki nodded her head and they returned to the others. They asked what did they talk about but Naruto joked and said he wanted to ask Yuki out on a date. Asuna hearing that gain a tick mark on her forehead. She couldn't believe her brother is such a player. They went to the Black Iron Castle, saw the names on it, took a picture with the Alder Guild. Then they logged out. Yuki looked at Naruto hopefully with his big red eyes. Naruto nodded at her. When they all logged out Naruto gripped his fist tightly and muttered. I will definitely save you, Yuki. Believe in me. I won't fail you. One week later. Naruto's apartment. Naruto slowly opened his eyes and took off Amusphere from his head. He stood up and walked towards the window and looked out of the window. He recalled the conversation with Yuki and gritted his teeth in anger. Why? Why Yuki must die? She still has a whole life ahead. Why must she die? 
Why the god is so unfair towards good people? Naruto thought helplessly. He punched the wall hard. Even if I said that I will save her but I didn't know how. But I will find a way. I won't let Yuki die. I did promise her that I will save her no matter what. Naruto took a deep breath to calm down and began to think out loud. First, I need to find a way to find Yuki's location. I need to know how bad her situation is. Naruto began to think hard. He starts to recall what Kirito said to Azuna. He said that Yuki is literally living in virtual world. What did he mean by that? Suddenly, Naruto's eyes widens in realization. The only way a person could dive 24-7 is by using that machine. There are no other explanations for Kirito's statement. Naruto hurriedly called Kirito to ask him about the location of the experiment on Medicuboid. He knew that Kirito knew the location. Moshi, Moshi, Kirito, I want to ask you something. Oh, isn't that Naruto? What do you need? And why didn't you contact with anyone? Shino, Rika and Shugu were worried sick of you. Said Kirito through the phone. Sorry, but I am in a hurry now. Could you please tell me the hospital, where there is the trial on Medicuboid? Asked Naruto seriously. Kirito was silent for a while. So you find out, huh, Naruto? I should feel surprised. So, you are going to find Zekin, huh? Why? Did something serious happen? I, I can't tell you anything, Kirito. I will be offline for some days. But please don't tell the girls about this conversation. If they find out then they will try to find the reason why, replied Naruto with solemn voice. Why? What happened after the boss fight, Naruto? Demand Kirito worriedly. I, I can't tell you anything now. Just, please, give the address, plead Naruto. Kirito took a deep breath and sigh out. Okay, if you didn't want to talk now, I won't force you. But I expected the answers from you, when the business is finished. Deal. Deal. After everything is over, I will answer all your questions, replied Naruto with a nod of his head. Kirito told Naruto the place where the experiment on Medicuboid is testing. Naruto thanks him and ends the call. He remembers that the best doctor in Japan is somewhere in Tokyo. Her name is Senju Sunad, the owner of Senju Clinic. She was proclaimed, miracle healing goddess, because she has saved dozen of lives and even managed to cure some sickness that was told to be incurable. She is the only hope to save Yuki. But Senju Sunid is a person with a very high authority and status, he couldn't approach her and ask her for a help like that. Wait. Naruto recalled with widened eyes. If I recall right, then Jiraiya is childhood friends with her. Maybe he will help me to meet up with her. Scene change. So you want to meet up with Sunid? Can you tell me the reason though? Asked Jiraiya that was sitting on the coach. He is watching the TV with a pervert eyes as on the TV is a beauty contest. Naruto rolls his eyes at the typical Jiraiya and said, Yes, just rearrange a meeting for me with her. It's really important for me. Maybe she is the only one that can help me. Okay, I will arrange you a meeting with her. Knowing how stubborn you are, I won't ask you for a reason anymore, replied Jiraiya with a glance from the corner of his eye. Naruto thanks him and gives him his number to contact him. Now he needs to go to Yuki's possible place, and find out just how bad her situation is. With Azuna, after the boss battle, Azuna couldn't contact either Naruto or Yuki. She felt that something happened during the last boss battle, but she didn't know exactly what. But she has a bad feeling about this. So she decided to go to Naruto's current living place to ask him directly. Azuna knocked on the door and the door opened to reveal Jiraiya. Um. I am sorry, but is Naruto home? You must be Jiraiya-san, right? I am Yuki Azuna. Nice to meet you. Oh, so you are Azuna-chan, eh? Naruto left for a while now. And he didn't tell me anything, lied Jiraiya. Is that so? I am sorry then. I will come the other time, replied Azuna and turned to leave. Jiraiya looked at her back and with a heavy sigh and closed the door. Yokohama Port. Northern General Hospital. Naruto has reached the same hospital, where Yuki's possible location. He walked in and went to a register to ask. Could you help me to find one person, please? Yes, I can. Who are you looking for? Replied a receptionist. Naruto scratched his head and reply. I don't know her name. But I think she is about the age of 15. I am sorry, but that's not enough information for me to search her out. Could you tell more specifically? Replied the receptionist. She is the one that is using the test model of Medicuboid here, said Naruto. 
After hearing that, the neighbor receptionist widens her eyes and asks Naruto. I am sorry, but could you tell me your name? Naruto blinked in surprise, but still answered the question. I am Naruto. Uzumaki Yuki Naruto. The same receptionist still has the same look of wonder and turned to Naruto then said. Sit on the bench over there and wait for a minute. Okay, replied Naruto. Scene change. Naruto is sitting on the bench and is waiting like he was told. He heard the sound of footsteps so he turned to that direction. There is a doctor that is slowly approaching him. Hello, I am sorry to keep you waiting, said the doctor. It's nothing. Really, said Naruto and stood up to shake his hand with the doctor. So, you are Naruto-san. Am I correct? Asked the doctor. Yes, I am Kurahashi. I am Konoyuki-san's doctor, replied Kurahashi. Konoyuki-san, repeated Naruto. Scene change. Naruto and Drive, Kurahashi went to a table to talk with each other. I am amazed that you found this place. Yuki-kun said that someone named Naruto or Azuna may come here to find her, said Kurahashi. So, she did. Yeah, but she said she didn't tell you about the hospital. So I told her there is no way you will find this place, but. He sipped his drink and then continued. When the front desk asked for me, I was really surprised. Did Yuki-san tell you about me? Wondered Naruto. But, of course, she talks about you and someone named Azuna all the time. But when she is done talking about you, she gained a really solemn face. She never complained about her own situation. She really wants to see you, but she couldn't, replied Kurahashi. He then looked at Naruto and asked. You was the one that promised her that you will save her, right? Naruto nodded his head. Yuki-san did tell me about her situation, said Naruto solemnly. Then even after knowing that why did you promise her that? Why give her false hope? Asked Kurahashi. Because that is not false hope, I will find a way to save her, replied Naruto with determination burns in his eyes. Do you even know why she was in this situation in the first place? Asked Kurahashi. Naruto shook his head. Kurahashi took a deep breath and start talking. Okay, I will tell you everything. Yuki-san and all her family were infected by a virus called AIDS. Naruto widened his eyes in horror and gasped. But her virus is a drug-resistant type. Her mother despaired for her children's future. She was prepared to kill herself. At one point. But she decided to continue to live and fight the illness. Soon, after the birth, Yuki-kun was given multi-drug therapy. It's really hard for a young child to go through so many drug therapies. There are also side effects as well. But despite that her family believes that she will get better. Yuki-kun did her best to fight the illness. But in the fourth grade, her immune system collapsed. That's why she was hospitalized here. But even she she is always smiling and believed that she may one day recover from her illness. He then turned to Naruto and said. I don't know why you give her such a promise. But if you really could save Yuki-kun, then I will be really grateful. I don't know why but I could also feel a special aura coming from you, Naruto-san. I could feel that you could create a miracle. So please create a miracle and save Yuki-kun. She didn't deserve to say goodbye to the life just yet. She is still so young. She has her whole future wait for her ahead. I will save her, Dr. Kurahashi. Thank you, for sharing her story with me, said Naruto and stood up to leave. Didn't you come here to see her, Naruto-san? Asked Drive, Kurahashi surprise. I will see her, when she could open her eyes and looks directly at me. I've a business to take care of for now, said Naruto and stood up to leave. Before he left, he glanced from his shoulder at Kurahashi and said. Could you please send this message to Yuki-san? Continue to believe in me and the miracle will happen. With that Naruto left the doctor behind and walked out of the hospital. Scene change. Naruto just received a call from Jiraiya and he told him that he could go straight to her cabinet now. Send you clinic. Sunad's office. Naruto knocked the door several times. When he heard, come in, he opened the door slowly. In front of him, is possibly the most beautiful woman he ever sees. She has pale blonde hair, chocolate brown eyes with a diamond mark on her forehead. Her rack is huge and she is wearing a white doctor blouse. Oh, so you are the same Gaki that Jiraiya told me about. So, what did you want? Jiraiya told me that you really want to meet me, said Sunid and invite him to sit. Naruto did as he was told. Good evening, Senju-san. Yes, I'd like to ask you one question. Replied Naruto. 
I am listening. Is there a possibility to save a person that was infected with AIDS since birth? Asked Naruto seriously. Tsunade raised his eyebrow in surprise and asked him back. Why did you ask that question? Just please answer me the question, please. Said Naruto impatiently. Tsunade gazed at Naruto for a while and replied. Normally, no. But there are always exceptions. Exceptions. Yes. Exceptions. Those exceptions are the blood of Uzumaki members, replied Tsunade. Naruto widens his eyes and muttered. And my blood could save lives. How? Uzumaki. Blood is not just any blood. It is a true gift from God to Uzumaki. Uzumaki's blood has a healing ability that could heal practically all illness. There are very strong antibodies in the blood that could erase and destroy the entire virus in the infected body. That's the main reason why the members of Uzumaki family never get sick, explained Tsunid the gift of Uzumaki. Naruto widens his eyes in awe and wonder at his blood ability. T then if I transferred my blood to Yuki, I could save her, right? Well, yes Uzumaki's blood are universal, you could transfer it to anyone you want. But before you made any decision, I'd like to exam your body a little, said Sunid. Exam my body. For what? Wondered Naruto. Don't argue with me. I am the doctor here. Don't worry, it won't take long, said Sunid. Naruto shrugged his shoulders. After the examination, Sunid called Naruto in to talk with him about his condition. Sit, Naruto. Naruto sat down and wait for her reply. Sunid took a deep breath and said. I don't recommend you to make a blood transfusion to anyone, Naruto. Why is that? Asked Naruto suspiciously. Tsunade turned her gaze to Naruto. Her expression is really serious. Because you may die, after the transfusion. Naruto's eyes widens in horror and his eyes is full of confusion. I I don't understand anything at all, Senju-san. Why will I die after the blood transfusion? Your body is already at the limit as it is now. The only reason you are standing in front of me and not lying in the hospital's bed is your blood. If you will transfer your blood now, then your body will shut down. The possibility of the dying rate is 50-50. Think careful, before you make a decision, Naruto. You may save someone's life, but you will lose yours in the process, explained Tsunade the seriousness of Naruto's condition. That will be it for this video if you want more comment down below, like, subscribe. And see you guys later.